In this screencast, we take our first look at variance analysis. The idea behind variance analysis is to compare actual outcomes with some expected outcomes, perhaps taken from a budget. The hope of variance analysis is to direct managerial attention towards processes that need improvement. When we use a budget as a benchmark, it is often the case that we need to adjust the budget for the actual level of outcome as opposed to the anticipated level of outcome. So in our example, the company starts off with a plan to manufacture 10,000 radio control trucks and expects that about 10% of the tires that it purchases will be defective. Therefore, in order to have enough tires for 10,000 trucks, it anticipates purchasing 45,000 tires at $1.10. Now, this is the plan at the start of the process. However, there's no guarantee that the company will actually manufacture 10,000 trucks. And if it manufactures a different number, when it actually compares the outcome with the budget, it may want to adjust the budget for the actual level of trucks produced. In order to do this, we use a flexible budget. And as you can see, a flexible budget is the entire schedule of relationships between the quantity of trucks produced and the cost for tires. This slide presents the basic template for two-way variance analysis and shows the variances for sales, materials, labor, variable overhead, and fixed overhead. A couple of points are worth noticing. So for example, the very first variance, the sales price variance, is the difference between the actual quantity of units sold at the actual price minus the actual quantity of units sold at the budgeted price. And that's the formula given at the bottom of the slide. One somewhat controversial notion here is the correct number to use when determining the fixed overhead volume variance. And I've pointed it out. Here we're going to use the standard quantity allowed, but often analysts use another number. And it's typical to use a number based on how overhead is applied within a given system. The static budget variance is often the first place to start. In the static budget variance, we look at the difference between the actual cost of a resource and what that resource was budgeted to cost. So in this example, the actual cost was 46,000 tires were purchased and used at a dollar each for $46,000, whereas the budget called for 45,000 tires to be purchased and used at a dollar 10. So we can see that the actual amount of usage was $3,500 less than the budgeted amount of usage. So this is often referred to as a favorable cost variance because the amount of money spent was less than what was budgeted. Now, a problem with the static budget variance is that it doesn't allow for the actual number of trucks that were manufactured. Suppose that 9,800 trucks were actually manufactured well, the budget suggests that the company should have used 44,100 tires to produce the 9,800 trucks. So we can do a flexible budget variance where we compare the actual cost of the tires, 46,000, with what it should have cost given that only 9,800 trucks were produced. And we see, once again, that we have a favorable variance of $2,510. It's important to recognize that while both the flexible budget and the static budgets are budgets, they're based on different assumptions. The flexible budget is based on the actual number of trucks produced, whereas the static budget is based on the original plan for the number of radio-controlled trucks to be produced. The difference between the flexible budget and the static budget is called a volume variance. And if you look at the formula, you could see that the prices are the same, 
And what differs is that the flexible budget is based upon 44,100 truck tires, while the static budget is based on 45,000 truck tires. Since the relationship between the number of trucks produced and the number of tires is the same, this difference is due entirely to the number of trucks produced under the flexible budget, which was 9,800, versus the number of trucks anticipated under the static budget of 10,000. If we view the truck tires as materials, then we can do a complete two-way variance for the materials truck tires. So on the far left column, we see the actual quantity of truck tires purchased and used, 46,000, at the actual price, $1. And in the far right column, we see the flexible budget quantity of truck tires, 44,100, based on the number of truck tires that should have been used, and it's at the budgeted price of $1.10. In the middle, we see the actual quantity times the sales price. So we can now have two variances. One's called the price variance, and the other is called a quantity or usage variance. And if we look at the price variance, we can see that the quantities are the same, 46,000, and the differences are due to the difference in the actual price versus the budgeted price. And when we look at the quantity variance, we can see that the prices are the same, and the difference is due to the quantity of truck tires. 46,000 were used as opposed to the budget which said that only 44,100 tires should have been used to produce 9,800 trucks. Turning to a new example, we see budgets for VB Enterprises for sales. This company has two products, X1 and X2, and the static budget calls for 4,000 units of X1 and 6,000 units of X2 to be sold during the year. Actual sales are 3,800 units of X1 and 5,100 units of X2. The sales price variance is based upon the actual number of units, which we see are 3,800 and 5,100, and then the difference between the actual prices received and the budgeted prices received. So if we can add up these amounts, we see that the total sales price variance is $1,600, and it's, in this case, negative. So that's an unfavorable sales price variance. The sales volume variance is based on the difference between the number of units actually sold and the number of units that were planned to be sold, when we'll notice that the prices are the same, $10 and $15 in both cases. So once again, if we take the quantities times the prices, sum them up, and then take the difference, in this case we see that the sales volume variance, or sometimes called a sales activity variance, is a negative 15,500, and that's an unfavorable variance since it resulted in less revenue being generated than was initially planned for in the budget. In the prior example, we did a materials variance. Now we're going to do essentially the same variances, only applied to direct labor. And here we're going to focus in on one of the products, in this case, X1. So we look, first of all, at the actual quantity of labor, 183 hours at the actual labor rate. And we're going to compare that with the actual quantity at the budgeted labor rate multiply these numbers out and we get a price variance of $45.75 and that's a favorable variance since the actual price of labor was slightly less than the budgeted price. Now to get the quantity variance we have to answer the question well how much labor should have been used? Well the example says that 3800 units were produced and each unit should have used 1 20th of an hour of labor, so 3,800 times 1 20th equals 190 hours. So that's where the 190 comes from. Multiply that by the standard rate, and we get 4,750. 
In this case, we get another favorable variance, $175, because slightly less labor hours are used than would have been budgeted for the, an output of 3,800 units. The last variance we'll look at are the fixed overhead variances. The variances start with the actual amount of fixed overhead, 63,100, then the originally budgeted amount of overhead, 64,000, and this difference, which is once again a favorable variance, is called a spending variance, and then we compare that with the amount of overhead applied. Well, the amount of overhead applied is based on the number of machine hours, which in this case was 1,540 at the rate of $40 per machine hour, and therefore the overhead applied is $61,600. So the volume variance here, in this case, is an unfavorable variance and is due to the fact that the number of units produced is less than what the original budget called for. So what we learn in terms of the volume variance is not so much about the fixed overhead, but more about the level of activity that the company actually experienced during the period. And in this case, we would say the company probably operated at lower than its preferred capacity.